When most people hear the word Unix, they immediately think of Linux. They imagine open source powerhouses like Ubuntu, Arch, Debian, Fedora, or even the systems that form the backbone of servers, supercomputers, and cloud infrastructure. But very few realize that Linux is just one branch of the giant Unix family tree, and that there exists another world, one that is often overlooked, misunderstood, or simply never talked about. This world has shaped the internet, influenced every major operating system today, and silently powers critical parts of global technology. This is the world of BSD, a family of operating systems with a legacy as deep as Unix itself, a philosophy different from Linux, and a history full of innovation, legal battles, and breakthroughs that changed the digital world forever. And yet, most regular users have no idea what BSD really is, where it came from, or why it matters so much. To understand BSD, you must step back to a time long before Linux existed, before open source became mainstream, and before the personal computer revolution took off. The story of BSD begins in the early 1970s inside AT and T's Bell Labs, where Unix was born. But early Unix was restricted, closed, and licensed in ways that limited who could use it. By the late 1970s, a group of talented researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, began modifying Unix, adding performance improvements, networking tools, and new features that the original Unix lacked. Their enhanced version became known as the Berkeley Software Distribution, BSD. Over time, BSD transformed into a complete operating system more advanced than the Unix it was built from and containing features so powerful that they define today's computing standards. For example, the first complete implementation of TCP, IP. The very networking stack that the internet still uses was created and distributed in BSD. If you are watching this video with an internet connection, browsing websites, streaming content, using DNS, or interacting with online services, you're touching technology that BSD helped create. From the Sockets API to core networking standards, BSD didn't just influence the internet. It built fundamental parts of it. But while BSD was becoming more advanced and powerful, it had a unique license that would later define its role in the technology world. The BSD license allowed anyone to use BSD code freely, even in closed source commercial products. This meant companies could take BSD, modify it, and use it in proprietary systems without giving the changes back. To the Berkeley developers, this represented true freedom. But for the open source world, this sometimes meant BSD's contributions became invisible. And that explains one of the biggest surprises about BSD, even if UV never installed FreeBSD. OPNBSD or NETBSD, you are almost certainly using BSD code every single day. Apple's MacOS, iOS, Ipados, Tvos, and WatchOS all contain large amounts of BSD code. PlayStation consoles use BSD. Many enterprise firewalls and routers are built on BSD. Cloud storage systems, network appliances, and even some Windows networking components contain BSD-derived code. BSD is everywhere, but often hidden. To understand how BSD became so widespread yet so invisible, you also have to look at the struggles it faced. While Linux was growing in the early 1990s, BSD was locked in a legal battle. AT&T sued the BSD developers, claiming that parts of the code belonged to proprietary Unix. Although the accusations were eventually proven wrong, the lawsuit stalled BSD for several years. During this time, Linux exploded in popularity. Universities adopted it. Hobbyists embraced it. Companies supported it. And by the time BSD was legally cleared, Linux had already become a global force. Many believe that if the lawsuit never happened, BSD might have become the dominant Unix-like system instead of Linux. But despite losing the popularity race, BSD quietly became the choice of professionals who value stability, security, 
and long-term reliability over rapid change. Today, BSD exists in several major variants. Freebs is the most popular general-purpose system running on servers, desktops, routers, and cloud platforms. It's known for stability, documentation, and performance. Opimst is the security-focused branch created with an obsession for correctness, code auditing, and minimalistic design. It's the birthplace of Opinch, the tool used for secure remote access across the entire internet. Nebs focuses on portability, with a slogan that proudly says, of course it runs NETBSD, because it can run on almost any hardware imaginable, from modern servers to obscure vintage machines. But the most important thing BSD offers isn't just stability or security. It is a philosophy. BSD systems are built as unified operating systems. The kernel, userland, utilities, libraries, and documentation are developed together by the same teams. This creates a consistent, predictable environment. Linux, by contrast, is built like a massive ecosystem of components developed by separate groups and assembled by distributions. This leads to flexibility, but also inconsistency. Two Linux distros can feel completely different. BSD feels the same from version to version, year after year, because it is intentionally designed with long-term stability in mind. This consistency is what many system administrators and network engineers love about BSD. It doesn't surprise you. It doesn't switch to a new init system overnight. It doesn't rearrange your file structure. It doesn't introduce features that destabilize the system. Instead, it evolves slowly, carefully, and thoughtfully. And nowhere is this more visible than in Open's approach to security. Opens developers audit code obsessively. They remove insecure patterns, eliminate unnecessary complexity, and focus on creating a system that is secure by default. Many modern security technologies came from Opimst. Instead of chasing trends, the developers prioritize correctness, creating a system trusted in environments where failure is not an option. New users sometimes misunderstand BSD because it doesn't teach try to impress with flashy features or fancy installers. The installers are clean, text-based, and stable. The documentation is thorough and educational. System files follow consistent patterns. Everything feels crafted with purpose. And while this makes BSD appealing to professionals, it can feel intimidating for beginners. But that's part of its charm. BSD doesn't try to be everything for everyone. It tries to be a masterpiece for those who value clarity, precision, and reliability. When you look at performance, BSD often shines quietly in the background. Freebs' networking stack is world-class. Its jail system, an early form of containers, existed long before Docker. CFS, one of the most advanced file systems in the world, runs beautifully on Freebst, offering snapshots, checksums, redundancy, and data integrity unmatched by many Linux options. Even though BSD is often seen as server-focused, it can run modern desktops like KDE Plasma, GNOME, XFC, and more. It won't come pre-configured like most Linux distros, but that's intentional. BSD hands you a clean foundation so you can build exactly the experience you want without unnecessary clutter. BSD does have challenges. Hardware support, especially for newer devices, may lag behind Linux. GPU drivers, Wi-Fi chipsets, and certain modern peripherals often receive Linux support first. The smaller BSD community means fewer contributors and slower driver development. But the trade-off is worth it for many. BSD's codebase is cleaner. Its systems are more consistent. And its development is more disciplined. BSD also has a different relationship with commercial companies. Because the BSD license allows proprietary use. Companies often take BSD code without contributing improvements back. Apple is the most famous example. MACOS and iOS rely heavily on BSD components yet relatively little of their enhancements return to the community. 
This is entirely allowed by the BSD philosophy. Freedom means freedom for everyone, including corporations. But this also slows down the growth of BSD compared to Linux, which benefits from the GPL's requirement that modifications must be shared. Even so, BSD's impact on the world is far bigger than its user base. Financial institutions rely on BSD-based firewalls for their unmatched stability. Cloud companies rely on ZFS for storage integrity. Universities and researchers use NETBSD for architecture studies. And OPEM's powers secure communications everywhere. Even systems that appear unrelated to BSD secretly depend on it. Android includes BSD derived networking components. Windows uses BSD code in parts of its TCP, IP stack. Major routers, switches, appliances, and network tools borrow heavily from BSD. BSD is woven into the Internet's DNA. What makes all of this even more fascinating is that BSD isn't trying to dominate. It isn't chasing market share. It isn't chasing hype. BSD developers build BSD because they love craftsmanship. They value correctness. They believe in long-lasting engineering, not overnight trends. While Linux races forward with rapid changes and massive global contribution, BSD moves with precision and patience. And that creates a culture unlike any other in open source. People who use BSD often describe it like a well-designed instrument, not flashy, not loud, but beautifully crafted, intuitive once you learn it, and capable of stunning performance when used skillfully. You start to trust BSD. You appreciate its order. You admire its clean design. You rely on its stability. And this trust becomes part of the user experience in a way that is difficult to describe. Unless you've lived inside a BSD system, in the bigger picture of computing history, BSD represents something deeper. It represents engineering purity. It represents careful thought in a world driven by speed. It represents the belief that good software should not only work, but should be elegant, maintainable, and timeless. In a world of rapid releases, experimental features, and constant change, BSD remains calm, steady, and wise. And whether you realize it or not, BSD shapes your digital life more than almost any other software. Without BSD, the modern internet would not exist as we know it. Without BSD, MacOS and iOS wouldn't look or behave the way they do. Without BSD, secure communication across the internet would be far more difficult. Without BSD, countless servers, routers, consoles, cloud platforms, and security tools would lose their foundations. BSD is not the loud voice of the open source world. It is the heartbeat. Quiet, reliable, essential. A masterpiece of engineering that most people never see, yet rely on every single day. Linux may be the public face of the Unix family, but BSD is its other side, the hidden side, the quieter side, the side built with immense care and depth. And now that you know the story, you can appreciate the legacy behind the systems you use every day. BSD is not just an operating system. It is a philosophy, a legacy, and a quiet force shaping the digital world from behind the scenes.